All right, so let's get started. Super glad that you guys are joining me live. So, you know, I was thinking about this because I was talking to a prospective client last week and uh, she was talking to me about the fact that, you know, she wanted to move her business from a hobby, hobby or it was, uh, you know, she was borderline going to be considered a hobbyist versus an actual entrepreneur by her accountant. So I thought, you know, that's not the first time that I've heard that and I've never done a topic on it. So, you know, no time like the, the present to do this topic, which is, you know, are you a hobbyist or are you actually a travel boss? And we're going to talk about what all that means. Uh, and let's, let's actually ask ourselves some questions to determine where are you now and where do you need to move? Uh, if your desire is not to be doing this as a hobby. All right. You guys ready to go? So first question, you know, we, you normally I start off these sessions with questions, but today I'm going to start off with definitions, right? I actually looked up the definition of a hobby. And I was pleasantly surprised what the definition was. But let me read you what the definition is. It's done, it's something that is done regularly in your leisure time for pleasure, right? Are you surprised by the definition? I I was a little surprised by that definition. But that's what the definition is. I don't remember if, the, if it was Webster or who it was. I just Googled uh, hobby. And that was the definition. Done regularly in your leisure time for pleasure. Now, the definition of a for-profit business is that you are operating with the intent to make a profit, right? So I want to underline the word intent, Right. So for profit, I assume that you all are not in business or not doing your travel business uh, for nonprofit. So I'm purely speaking from a profit perspective that your intent is to make a profit. Right. Tonight is not about me throwing shade on what you're doing. Tonight is about being intentional. Right. Being intentional tonight. Is it your intention to be for profit or is it your intention to do this because you really love it and you just want to do it in your spare time? So we're going to actually assess if your actions are intentionally going to get you profitable or you're unintentionally being a hobbyist. Right. That's what we're going to talk about today. All right. So. What I want you to do is I want you to really key on this word, right? What distinguishes you from those who have intent and those with no intent, right? That's what today's conversation is all is going to all be about, right? And I really want you to think to yourself, even though you may have intent to make profit, are your actions of a hobbyist and not a true travel boss business owner, right? So that may hurt a little bit once we go through the questions and get the answers. But I want you to, you know, put your big girl panties on and for the men, put your big boy, boy boxers on and let's get through the conversation and let's be intentional as we end this year going into 2021 and really do things on purpose or position ourselves to do things on purpose so that we get the end result that we want. Are you guys game for that? Does that sound like something you want to do tonight? Because if you don't, then, you know, it was great talking to you and I'll see you later. But if you do stick with me to the end and we were going to get down to the bottom of this. All right. So, you know, before I continue, let me introduce myself. My name is Sunday Gardner. I come to you live um, talking all things launching, marketing and operating a successful and profitable travel business, right? The idea for this is to give you guys free training on areas dealing with launching your travel business, marketing your travel business, the mindset of a of an entrepreneur that really wants to be successful, have a six-figure business or greater, right? What does it take to do that? And so welcome to uh welcome to the show. So I'm super excited uh, to have you here today. Okay, so what I'm going to be talking about for the rest of this session is Let's evaluate your actions to determine what you need to be doing in 2021, either start doing or continue to do in a, in a, in a different manner. If you haven't achieved your goals, uh, to make you either continue to be a hobbyist or, or to actually be a business owner. Right. And so 
you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, before I go into the first question, a lot of people I've been looking at the answers when people come in, right? Because when you come into the group, there's three questions I ask you. And one of the first questions is, what are you struggling with in your business? And a lot of people have said COVID, right? And, and, and frankly, um, COVID has been devastating to the travel industry. There is no, uh, question or, um, thought behind that. But the reality is COVID aside, many of you all are utilizing COVID as an excuse as to the reason why you aren't getting clients, right? Or you don't have a client base. So I'm not talking to the, to the business owner that, you know, has a client base and they have a consistent attraction system. I'm really talking to those people who haven't ever made any sales, right? Who have never really, um, booked travel, right? If, if, if you're telling me that COVID is your reason. There are people who are booking travel right now. There are people who I was on a plane a month ago, full of people. And you know, if you're a smart traveler, you're not going to book without a travel agent. But nonetheless, my point is, I don't want you to use COVID as the crutch. Don't get me wrong. Don't slide in my inbox and tell me, you know, well, COVID has impacted me and it's the only reason why I'm not saying 100%, but 99% of the people who tell me COVID, it's really not COVID, it's you, right? And it's because you don't have systems in place to really uh, run a business. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So COVID aside... I want you to take COVID aside out the, the equation. And I really want you to answer these questions that I'm going to pose to you, honestly, despite COVID. Okay. So the first question is, and this is going to be a good, this is a trick question, right? Does your travel business bring you pleasure, right? I.e. you love booking, researching, advocating for your clients, etc. Now, what I want to distinguish between in the upcoming questions is just because you enjoy it doesn't mean, one, that you have a real business or that you're a hobbyist, right? I just want to make that distinction. Just because you enjoy it, that has nothing to do with hobbyists or thing. I just want to know how many people actually enjoy what they do. And many of you do, which is great. All right. So now that we know that you enjoy what you're doing, you're not doing somebody that someone doesn't have a gun to your head and you're, you're not doing this business because you're forced to. You're honestly doing it because you have pleasure in doing it, right? So... What I want to make sure is, is that you're not setting up a business that you hate, right? That's one thing that is some entrepreneurs do is that they set up this business and they don't even like it, right? But all of you that are answering one tells me that you're, you, you love it and it brings you pleasure. All right. So that to me is very important that it, you enjoy what you do. Okay. Number two question. Now this is where the hard questions come in. Do you actually block time in your calendar? off in your calendar, right? To work on your business or do you do it when you get the chance, right? Let me just say, I want to, I want to repeat the definition, right? Definition of a hobby done regularly in your leisure time for pleasure. You're not intentional, right? What's the one thing that you need to be doing to ensure that you start treating this as a business? Be intentional about your time. If I were to look at your calendar right now, would I be able to ascertain that you were even in the business, right? Do you have discovery calls on your calendar? Have you blocked out time for marketing? Have you blocked out time for content? Have you blocked out time for designing, uh, designing, uh, travel uh, for your prospective clients, right? Is is your calendar reflective of a travel business owner or is it empty, right? All right, who's got a calendar and is using their calendar to intentionally block off time to ensure that that time doesn't get lost? Because, you know, I looked up and it's already seven o'clock. I was a little late this today, right? Because I got backed up earlier because I didn't, you know, keep my time and accounted for this evening, right? So my point is, if you want to start thinking about your business as a business and not a hobby, be intentional about your time. Your calendar should reflect what it is that you intend to have on it. And I, and, and I want to be really super clear about this. 
All right, I am not a mindset coach. I will be the first to tell you that, but I do believe in having the appropriate mindset and I do believe in manifestation, right? So if your calendar currently is empty, right, and you don't have prospective clients booked on your calendar, my question to you, how many hours a week are you gonna allocate for that? Block that time off now, right? Is it two, one hours to take discovery calls? What time of the day are you going to make yourself available for your business and discovery calls being one of the most important parts of your business, right? What is your intentional time block that you're going to make for your business? If you truly are going to be saying, this is no longer a hobby, this is my business, right? Hobbyists do this when they can. Hobbyists fit their their business or their hobby in whenever they think they have free time. It's not something that is blocked on their time, right? Maybe if they're a good time manager, maybe they block their hobby time, right, on their time. But most people who are hobbyists, they do it whenever they can, right? I crochet, right? That's my hobby, right? I got a, I got about, I don't know, seven or eight blanket projects that I've started over the last four years that sit in a basket. And whenever I get the time, I work on my crochet blankets, right? That's a hobby. My business, I work on, you know, Monday, I have a set time that I work on. Tuesday, I have a set time I work on. Wednesday, I have a set time I work on. But is that even feasible? When you still don't block out specific time all day, gets blackened out by some other activity, right? The kids get sick. You got a doctor's appointment you forgot about. Your husband needs to get picked up because he's got a flat tire, whatever. Block the time off. And be intentional about that block, right? I've got people who are putting times of day. And that's exactly what I mean about being intentional, right? I don't want to, again, I want you guys, if, if you want things to change for yourself in 2021, you need to do things differently. And the first thing is, is don't be ambiguous. Don't be ambiguous to the universe. Don't be ambiguous to yourself and don't be ambiguous to your calendar. So when I say block time off, I mean specific time, right? Specific days of the week. What days of the week? What uh, one to two hours of those days of the week are you going to do that? When are you going to sit down and plan out your week so that your week goes according to the way that you planned it as opposed to haphazardly happening accidentally, right? All right, so that's number two, right? Is be intentional about your time. Have your time. And, and let me let me just touch on something I said because I want to make sure that I expand upon it. Is if you currently don't have discovery calls on your book and you don't even know what a discovery call is, that's a different conversation. But if you know what discovery calls are, right? And you know that that's part of the sales process because your number one job is to market and sell in your business, right? And you currently don't have it, I want you to block Lock that time off, even if you fill it with another activity for the time that you're going to schedule to take discovery calls in your business in 2021. Does that make sense to everybody? Are you guys understanding what I'm saying about being intentional, right? And it starts with your calendar and it starts with your time because that is the most precious thing that you have is your time. And we often mismanage it. We often mismanage the time that we have. Each of us have the same 24 hours in a day, right? So when people get on the phone with me and they tell me, you know, I just, I need help with time management. Frankly, I can't help you with time management, right? Because I can't help you prioritize what's important to you. Only you can do that. Only you can block off the time that's going to be necessary to get your business worked on. Only you can do that. I don't, I'm not responsible for motivating you. I'm not responsible for providing you uh, additional hours in the day because they don't exist, right? You have to be intentional about what it is that you want. And it's not going to magically appear. I've got the same 24 hours that you do. And you would be surprised what I do with those 24 hours, right? The amount of things that I'm able to accomplish with myself and with others in that same 24 hours. And that's because I'm very intentional about my time, what I spend my time on and what I delegate, do, uh, for others to spend their time on in my company, right? Same thing for you. All right, so number three, ready for number three? Now, again, this is, are you a hobbyist or are you a true business owner? Or are you gonna move there by t taking the action that we talk about tonight? So number three is, do you have a systematic way to get clients? Or are you just waiting for clients to appear to you? 
Now, if you're new to me, you don't know that I think that friends and family are unreliable. So let me just tell you that now, right? Friends and family are unreliable, right? So if your business is based on friends and family, that's great. But the likelihood of you getting to six figures or more, if that's your goal, and this really being a predictable, systematic business that you can rely on. And some of you are hoping that your business will replace your full-time job. If you are relying on friends and family, it's not going to happen. So stop hoping and praying. It's not going to happen. If you do not have a systematic way to get clients, if you have not systematized that, you cannot reliably uh, predict your ability to generate revenue through your client base, right? Then you are not going to hit your goals, period. End of story. Now, there's going to be people that are going to jump in my inbox and be like, you know what? You're wrong, Sunday. I've got a bunch of friends and family and I'm hitting my goals, right? That's great, right? <laughs> you know, I'm not going to tell you again, 100% of the people aren't going to hit their goals, but I'm telling you, if you're trying to be a six-figure business only on friends and family and you don't have a systematic, it's not likely and the numbers are not in your favor and I'm a numbers believer, that's not in your favor that you're going to consistently hit six figures predictably if you don't have a systematic way to get clients, right? All right, so I want, I, I want you to understand a hobbyist doesn't care about that. They're not intentional, but you guys all told me that you were intentionally working for profit, right? Profit requires a sales process. Profit requires clients, right, who are buying, not just people who are getting quotes and you're giving them away for free. That's hobbyist work, right? Profit for profit means you get paid for your services greater than your expenses, right? That's what profit. So we're not even talking about gross sales. I'm not asking if you sell. I'm asking, are you in business for profit? And if you're in business for profit and you don't have a systematic way to get clients, right? How are you going to ever be profitable, right? How are you going to be able to, now, now you can, you can, again, if your profit is, you know, you only want to make a hundred dollars in profit, right? You don't have a salary, right? I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the person who really wants to be able to take home. They are paying themselves consistently every month, a salary out of their business, right? It has replaced their full-time job. And this is what they do, right? That's what many of you all tell me your dreams and hopes and desires are, right? And so if you don't have a way to attract track clients, then there's no, you, you have no path to profitability. There's no path. Your friends and family aren't going to get you there. Your friends and family will get you some sales, right? The friends and family will allow you to make some money, but they're not going to make you allow you to make consistent profits. Does that make, does that make sense? Like, do you guys understand the difference? Right? Again, I love friends and family. I love them and those that support, but I don't need them to be profitable, right? I don't need them to run my business and for my numbers to make sense. I got to count on Sally, Joe, and you know, my aunt Sarah, right? I don't need to worry about them if I'm thinking about profitability. Those, my friends and family are icing to my cake, right? If my friends and family buy my travel services, that's icing to my cake. It's not the cake. Does that make sense, right? That's where we want to be. If you want to be a hobbyist, then you don't care how you get your business. If you're truly a travel boss, you care about how you get your business. And let's talk about how do you do that, right? So for those that don't know how to do that, you need a client attraction system. What is a client attraction system? You say, well, it's a way to attract clients, right? It's a way for you to attract your ideal clients. The problem is many of you don't even know who your ideal client is. You're going out there chasing every single body that says travel. You're you're posting on your timelines, I am a travel agent, come and use me, right? I am so very sick of this meme, right? Uh, one of the memes, there's so many of them that I've seen over the last several months about, you know, you know, uh, you know, relax, use a travel agent, do a travel agent. I mean, I love it. It's cute, right? I I'm not really about cutesy stuff in my business, but the reality is, is right. I don't want everybody using me. I only want specific types of clients picking up the phone, pick, you know, Googling it and discovering me, right? I don't want hobbyists discovering me. 
uh, frankly, I mean, and again, no shade. I'm not trying to throw shade at what your decision is. What I'm saying is I know what my ideal client is, is my ideal client is somebody who is intentional about profitability, is intentional about their vision. Who is your ideal client? And do you know who it is, right? You can't attract who you don't know, right? Well, you could accidentally attract them. But again, I don't want to accidentally do anything in my business. I want to be intentional about everything. There's no, there is no, there is no mistake that you're here tonight. There, it's not by accident that I, that you're on this live tonight. It's very intentional in the way that we run our marketing, right? That you were invited to join this live and you were notified about this live. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't, oh, I just happened to post and accidentally you guys found the link and you accidentally d uh, jumped on my live. No, it was very intentional in terms of the way that we market to our perspective and our existing clients, right? Are you doing the same thing? Are you hoping and praying that your message is going to get in front of your ideal client. That is the difference between a hobbyist or amateur, right? Let's talk amateur versus hobbyist versus a professional who really wants to be and stand out in this, uh, in this industry, right? Is being intentional about understanding one, who your client is and having a system by which you attract them right? A client attraction system is, is very simple, right? Simple in terms of definition and very simple to implement if you know what to do, right? It is the means by which you introduce your services and products to your ideal client. One, you understand who your ideal client is. One, you understand what your product and services are, right? And you are in front of them where they're at. If you're not in front of them where they're at and you're, accident, you're on your personal business, uh, many of you are not even on your business page. You're just on Facebook personal page spewing out all of these packages and wondering why people aren't buying, right? Your ideal client is probably not on your personal page. Many of you will tell me, no, I've got a personal page. It's got 5,000 people, right? Facebook knows what you're doing. You're not paying to play. This is a pay to play. <laughs> I always have a hard time saying that. The, Facebook is a pay to play platform. Triple P, pay to play platform, right? Say it again. Learn to say it. If you're not paying Facebook, you're not getting seen in the manner that you could be seen if you decide to pay, right? And the reality is, is that that system, if you use to use Facebook as your traffic source, is an amazing system. It's an amazing system and an amazing method to attract your ideal client. One, if you understand who your ideal client is, right? If you've done the work to understand who it is that you are selling to, right? And, and, and let's, not, let's be, let's be real, right? The problem with travel professionals, right? Is one, you don't think of yourself as a professional. Two, you don't think of yourself as a salesperson. Three, you don't know, you're not doing anything in regards to marketing besides throwing up packages, right? That's not what the online space is going to uh, get you. You're not going to get anywhere with that, right? And you look amateur doing it, right? If you are just on your personal page, even if you're on your business page and you're providing zero value to a community of people that you've identified as your ideal client, you're not, you're just playing around right? You're doing what every other amateur travel professional or every other amateur business owner is doing. And if you want to step up in 2021 and be a professional travel boss, right? You want to be a travel boss that's actually making money, that's attracting clients and doing the thing, right? Then you got to do things differently. And the first thing to do is understand who your audience is. You don't sell travel. You sell a particular experience. What is that experience that you're selling, right? What is the niche and the specialty that you have? Don't tell me group travel because I want you to watch another, a whole nother training if you tell me group travel because many of you are too generic even in the definition of your specialty, right? You have a niche that's not specific enough that even if your ideal client wanted to work with you, they wouldn't know that you were the person to work with because it doesn't, it doesn't speak to them. Right. So number two is probably one of the most important items besides your calendar is understanding who your client is and what it is that you're selling. Again, you're not just selling travel. You're selling an experience and a specific experience to a specific type of client. And every time that you write something or you do something in the space of marketing, your ideal client should look at that, look at it and be like, oh, shit, she is talking to me. Right. When when you read today's post. Were your, were your spidey senses like picked up and you're like, uh oh, oh, 
I don't know if I'm a hobbyist. I don't want to be a hobbyist. I want to be a travel boss, right? Right? I was talking to you because I know that many of you are operating as a hobbyist and you really desperately want to get out of that and you really want to be working for profit intentionally, right? We want you doing the same thing with your prospective clients. Okay, so number three, are you guys finding value in this? Let me know in the comments if this is hitting home, right? Like, do you feel like you can get an attraction system in 2021? And if not, you know, stick with me to the end and I'm going to talk to you exactly how you can work with me if that's something you want to do. Number four is, do you have a systematic way to manage, track, service your clients? Or are you just winging it? And this whole category is called client fulfillment. Do you have a way to fulfill your client's request systematically? Right? Do you have a system in place? Are you using a system? Are you doing it manually? What are you doing? Like, do you, can, do you have a method by which that you consistently fulfill clients? And what I mean by that is if you were to get 20 clients today, could you fulfill the 20 clients requests without burning the hell out? Right? You know, if somebody asked me to make 20 blankets right now, hell no, I couldn't make 20 blankets right now. I do this shit for a hobby, right? Difference from you is if you got 20 clients today, could you fulfill the bookings of 20 clients today with the processes that you have in place for your client fulfillment? You know, we launched, we launched Travel Passions to Profits. We um, added a new uh, major module to the program and my fulfillment was off, was not good. It was, it was off the game, right? You know, we were sending out emails all over the place. They weren't consistent. People weren't getting where they needed to be, right? We needed to make changes to our fulfillment process, right? You know, per person A in my team didn't know that a new person came on. I mean, things were a hot ass mess, right? So I had to step back and I had to take a look at my fulfillment process, right? Because my client attraction systems game is on, is on point, right? But this year I had to take a serious look at how we fulfilled our promise to our clients. Same thing with you. If you get an onslaught of new clients today, could you fulfill them and make them happy and not lose a one? because you've got a process in place. And if the answer is no, then you need to work on that in 2021. And that's going to be the thing that sets you apart from your competition. That's going to be the thing that makes you a boss going forward so that you can ensure profitability. If you can't fulfill your client's desire or fulfill your promise to your clients on a consistent basis. That means no testimonials. That means you don't get repeat clients. That means your clients don't love you, right? There's all this ramification and it's very expensive to acquire a client, right? So if your fulfillment process sucks, right? That means your business is going to suck. Right. And if you're saying no to this and you want to say that you are a travel boss and you want to make this for profit, this is something you have to fix, right? You have to, so somebody says, I need a good system. Many of you are not even operating with a CRM system, right? Some of you guys are taking requests and you're doing it manually, right? I mean, manual in 2021, you can't systematically figure out, like if you had to figure out all the people who were, who were traveling on, you know, February 4th, could you? COVID situation, all the people who are in Europe right now, and like, let's say you've got, Europe was your base, this is before COVID, and you need to contact all of those people, could you do it without causing yourself like a headache? How many headaches did you have because you didn't have a good system, right? Ask anybody who experienced that during this past year, right? You, you, just this year alone is a reason why you shouldn't be booking for yourself, let alone whatever niche that you're in. So this tells me already that you're, you don't have a niche, right? Why would someone not book with you? That's the question that you should be asking yourself if you know your client. I know why people come to me as a coach because they need, they need to know a systematic way to get their business uh, profitable, right? Same thing for your clients. Why would somebody, let's say you specialize in wedding destinations. Why would somebody book with you as opposed to doing it themselves, right? Less headache, less time, less worry, right? Less research time, just all sorts of reasons why. You need to answer that self before you even start selling is why somebody should book with you before they book it themselves. And I'm not, and, and, and the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, the do-it-yourselfer may not be your ideal client, particularly if you don't create courseware. 
But there's a great opportunity if you have a niche and you've got do-it-yourselfers in the market for you to create a course on how to do it, to teach them how to do it properly, right? And to be their own advocate and sell it for a really great price, right? There's a great opportunity for you to do that as well. That's another product and service that you can create in your business. A course for the do-it-yourselfer on how to do it properly, Right. And not get up a creek without a paddle, you know, in the event of an emergency, if they booked it themselves. Right. That's the whole point of what I'm saying tonight is understanding what your value is and selling that value to your prospects. All right. Okay. So now the next one is, have you even ever sold travel? Right. Some of you guys are new. Some of you guys have decided you were recruited by an MLM or a host agency and you decided to jump because it's a great idea. But, you know, I'm not really talking to you. I'm talking to the people who've been doing this for a year or greater and they've never sold travel. Are you even really interested in selling travel or are you just interested in recruiting? Right. Because there is a difference and it's not the same thing. Even though someone may have told you it's the same thing. You're not a travel business owner if you're not selling travel, right? Like, like, don't get it twisted. If you're not selling travel, you're not a travel business owner. What you are is a recruiter for the travel industry. That's what you are. You're not a travel business owner. You don't book travel. You don't know what it is to design travel. You don't understand what it means to be a travel advocate. And there is a difference, right? And so I want you guys to be very intentional about your skill set. If you are a beginner, which many of you are, will tell me I'm just beginning and you don't have the skills to be a travel agent, how the heck are you going to get them? Have you thought about that? And the supplier training that you get is great start, but it's not all that you need, right? So what I want you to think of yourself is as a professional, right? So I'm not talking to the recruiters. I'm not talking to the people who exclusively recruit, right? I'm talking to the people who really want to consider themselves to be a travel professional. And I'm not even saying a travel agent, right? Because an agent takes orders, right? And fulfills orders. And that's not what I train people to do. You are a designer of experiences, right? And so to be a designer and you don't have the expertise to do that, then you need to get them. Right. So that is the difference between a hobbyist and a professional. Right. A boss is they're an expert in their field. Right. So if you want to specialize in weddings and you don't know a damn thing about weddings and you haven't taken a special a course that's going to teach you how to be a great uh, wedding planner and a wedding destination person, then you're doing yourself a disservice. So don't don't buy don't buy the ticket that tells you that you can be a travel professional in this business without expertise. Right. You need some level of expertise. So you either go get it right Or you continue to fool yourself, right? You could teach yourself it, but then don't be surprised when you're not selling it because you don't even know how to speak the lingo. You need to get the lingo down, right? You need to get the knowledge down in your niche, right? Because that's what the hell I am. I'm charging a lot of money to give quotes, right? Most of my clients charge a lot of money to give quotes. Do you know why that is? Because they know the value of their time. They know the value of their expertise in the particular niche that they're in. They spend a lot of time uh, crafting that expertise, sharpening that expertise. And it's not randomly taking travel supplier to get a bunch of certificates to put on their uh, wall. It's focused, right? It's intentional, right? And that's what you need to be when it comes to your profession, right? So again, if you're recruiting, I'm not talking to recruiters. I'm talking to people who are really wanting to be an expert and they want to consider themselves to be a professional and they want to be a, you know, I tell myself how to, I think my mom taught me, my aunt taught me how to crochet many years ago. You know, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't really invest in taking a class. I could have taken a class, but I taught myself, watched a couple of videos and, you know, and, and then it came back to me and now I crochet, right? So that's my hobby, right? I'm probably, I invest in some books, right? I got some crochet books and some patterns and I download some stuff, right? And that's because I'm a geek and I'm a nerd, right? So I want to know different patterns and do stuff, right? So I do a little bit of extra, right? But most hobbyists, right? They kind of do a thing because they like it and that's what they do, right? But a professional, they study their craft, right? They're a professional. I'm a certified project manager. I mean, it took me 
took me some years, took me some money to, uh, to study for that exam. And it took me, and it takes me a continuing education to maintain that certification, right? Right. That's the difference between a professional. So if you really want to be a professional in this industry, then you need to figure out what is it going to take for you to be an expert in your niche. Right. One, you need to identify a niche and then how the heck are you going to become an expert in that niche? Right. OK, the last one. And then I'm going to skedaddle out of here is do you invest in money to make you more money? Let me say that again. Do you invest in money to make you more money? right? Hobbyist versus a travel boss, right? And what I mean by that is I invest money for resources so that I can expand my reach, right? So I invest money in resources. So I have a team, right? That's number one. I invest money in coaches. I am never asking you all to spend the uh, any amount of money on any program that I haven't spent on myself and in my business to get knowledge that is required for me to make more money, right? To make a profit. So if I don't know a thing, I'm going to go learn a thing, right? And at this, this venture in my, in my career, in my business, I'm not even trying to implement it myself. I'm not trying to figure out how to do a thing. I'm trying to figure out who's the expert in that thing. Let me go acquire that knowledge right from that expert so I can cut my time in, you know, triple fold, right? I'm not even trying to go Google it myself. What I'm Googling is who the hell the expert is, right? Who's the expert in that thing that I want to go learn or I need in my business that's going to get me greater reach, more clients, better sales process, better marketing, better client fulfillment, better fill in the blank. Right. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to go invest in that thing. Right. So I invest my money and my time to make more money and create more of my own time. Does that make sense? Again, I only have 24 hours. You only have 24 hours, but what I'm doing is I'm trying to do less work right? With more resources so that I can focus on the things that are going to make me more money. My superpower is strategy, right? My superpower is planning. My superpower is designing the systems that make it all work, right? So that's what I need to spend my time on. I don't need to spend my time on other activities. So I hire that out, right? So I invest to make more money. So if I want to make the next level of money, I'm figuring out, okay, what resources do I need in my company to make that happen? Right. If I need to add a new traffic stream, right? We're adding YouTube, right? What do I need to do? Well, I need to hire a coach in YouTube. I need to hire, I need to find the best YouTube coach there is. And I need to hire that coach. Right. Right. I need to figure out what the marketing strategy is going to be for YouTube. Right. I'm going to hire, I'm going to hire that out. I've got other things to do. I've got clients to, to help. I've got people to talk to, right? And I don't have the time to do that. So to, in order for me to alleviate that time, stop wasting my time and money, I'm going to hire the best, right? Same thing for you. If you want to get where you need to be and you want to make money and you don't know how to do it, then hire it. Hire it. Find the best in that field of that thing that you are missing and hire it out, right? Um, the reality is, is, you know, I don't, I invest a lot of money in me and my business, my team. I invest in them from a time and money perspective because we want to be the best. I, you know, my dream when I started this, uh, three years ago, specifically for the travel industry, uh, was I wanted to be when somebody looked for a business coach in the travel space, they saw Sunday Gardner, right? That is what we're aiming for, right? And when a black woman looked in the space and she was looking for someone that looked like her, she saw my face. That is what our goal is, is to help as many women of color realize their dream of being a profitable travel business, right? That is my vision, right? And so we invest a lot of time and dollars to make that happen. If you like this episode, then share it. Sharing is caring and don't keep it to yourself. Spread the word. Another way to support this channel is to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, or leave us a message. Join us inside of our free Facebook group, The Travel Boss Group. 
Better yet, if you think you need help, schedule your free travel business launch diagnostic call. Links are mentioned below. This has been Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. See you again on the next episode of Online Travel Boss TV.